Today we're talking about growth spurts, how to manage growth spurts, and what that means for uh, possibly even, uh, you know, your shop. So I wrote a book uh, that came out a couple years ago called The Age of Movement, and I'm pulling a lot of this information from what I distilled down into that book, so you can go read a little bit more about that and some of the studies that I'll put in the links to this video. Uh, this is something we talk about a lot because there has been a five-fold increase in sports injuries, youth sports injuries, since just the year 2000. In the face of us you know, understanding uh, more of the mechanisms behind these injuries, uh, we would hope that we have better... Uh, treatment methodologies, techniques, tactics around these injuries, uh, but we're you know we're facing two things that uh, we're an unhealthier society overall, and then we also see the over specialization and the the earlier specialization of youth athletics, uh, which we're right in the hotbed of one of those guys that's ca trying to beat back that uh, crashing wave, which is James Andrews of the uh, Andrews Institute. So we're talking about growth spurts, it's good to understand that there are three phases of growth spurts, with the first being the infantile growth phase, which goes from, uh, you know, basically, you're a newborn, you're a neonatus, all the way up to around three years of age, and this is a, a very rapid growth spurt, obviously, is the, you know, from the first, uh, from zero to two, we see central nervous system development, a kid goes from basically not being able to move, everything is reflexive, to up, walk, and run around like a, a full, you know, uh, functioning human, in the span of you know, usually less than two years, and then we still are developing the central nervous system, honing it over lifetime, pruning neuroplastic change, obviously. Second growth phase is a prolonged childhood phase with steady growth. So we don't see a lot of big jumps during this phase, uh, but we see steady growth, and that can be dependent on a lot of things, uh, nutrition, hormones, environment, all these things. Um, a uh, quick side note, it's been very common to actually, in our practice at least, we see a lot of kids being put on growth hormone supplementation before they even hit puberty to uh, deal with uh, growth issues, which aside, seems weird. Third phase of growth development is the adolescent growth spurt. This is what we all talk about is a growth spurt. can hit really a variety of ages, in particular with uh, early onset puberty nowadays due to you know, exogenous hormones and food and in the, the environment at large. But we would say usually from eight to 12 years old, obviously there's a, a gender differences here that uh, females on average tend to hit their adolescent growth spurt and puberty earlier than uh, men on average by one year. And uh, this growth spurt goes from that first onset, you know, as early as eight years old, maybe earlier now, can go all the way out to around 16 years of age, and we can still have growth occurring latent part of this adolescent growth spurt all the way up to 25 years of age, and that's just on average. Now, what do we do about this? How do we know when somebody's going through a growth spurt besides them, you know, growing a lot, stretch, stretch marks showing up, somebody saying, hey, my, you know, my legs ache at night. Well, the uh, Canadian Sport for Life uh, Center is something that uh, put together three very easy uh, metrics or tests. So they looked at standing and sitting height. Uh, so basically looking at torso versus uh, you know lower uh, lower extremity ratios, arm span, and then weight. And they look at these things and track them from the time you know a kid's uh, pre-sports participation, going through sports, and uh, via that they're able to predict or at least dictate when they're in certain phases of their uh, growth spurts, which I'm going to put a chart up here uh, from a study uh, called Windows of Accelerated Adaptation to Training by Bailey and Way from 2005. And this is also found in my book. Um, and you can see in this chart that as we go through the different phases, um, I'm pulling this chart up for myself to see here. As we go through the certain phases, um, there are specific activities that we're going to be working with uh, during those phases. In some of these phases, we're never going to be able to capitalize on them the same way if we would hit them during these, uh, these you know, peak times of the growth spurt. So we can see that this is you know, starting at five years old. We see one of the first things that uh, we tend to start working on is suppleness, which is the factor of basically mobility with, uh, let's say, grace, the ability to get an in range of motion and control with speed, right? Kids don't develop aerobic capacity until they build speed. So we have the 
the neuromotor function or movement to do something like running over a period of time. Then for both male and female, we see around the same age that skills, this is honing skills such as throwing, hitting objects, swim strokes, all these things become uh, honed as we've uh, got gross motor function under our belt. Um, we have the ability to move and end ranges under control, barring we're not in that 30% of the population that falls outside of the normal uh, motor pattern developments. Um, and then it kind of changes a little bit. And we see that obviously males maybe hit that peak height velocity growth spurt a little bit later than females. It's also a much steeper curve um, and it doesn't last quite as long, um, no pun intended there. Uh, but we see that during the peak height velocity for females, we actually want to work on speed first, then stamina. Um, you know, that could owe to maybe some of the ligamentous uh, changes that are going to happen during puberty for uh, females that they're going to become a little more lax. There's different ligamentous laxity at different parts of their uh, menstrual cycle throughout the month itself. Um, you see higher rates of ACL tearing at certain parts of the menstrual cycle versus others. Um, and then stamina second with women, stamina first for boys. Um, but what I tell everybody is from this age range, from eight to 12 years old, you're never going to be able to build mitochondrial density uh, like you can at, like this at any other point in your life, which is something, you know, I don't want to, us to turn into an Eastern Bloc country in the States where we say, hey, your kid needs to be doing these sports. But let's say it's perfect world. I have two little girls, a three-year-old and a six-month-old. And I really wanted them to be the best in the world at whatever they want to do later in life. I'm not picking a specific sport. My goal would be what? To encourage things that include speed and supplements, things like martial arts, sprinting, jumping, uh, you know, things that explore movement, gymnastics even at that age would be great. Then some skills, they maybe specialize a little bit, right? So maybe it's soccer, uh, you know, hitting, throwing, but not too much of any one thing still. When we hit that peak height velocity, they've done something they've probably started to specialize a little bit, but this is where we want, in my opinion, not too much, but we want massive amounts of volume of both uh, zone two, which has become very popular, zone two work, which think of soccer, like somebody jogging around, jogging around, every once in a while they sprint, jogging around, jogging around, right? Uh, swimming, fantastic uh, you know, type of sport for kids to take, uh, uh, participate during this time and we'll talk about the other reason of that in a minute uh, versus we do all of the same sport all the time let's say it's something uh, a reactive sport like baseball somebody's just sitting at shortstop barely moving except when the ball's hit to them running you know maybe just the base track you know max six times a game and doing conditioning a few times a week versus you know something like swimming I just you're never gonna get that back and then we see for both uh, boys and girls that strength comes on the back end and building stamina, why? Because you have to be able to exert enough amount of force over enough amount of time via stamina to build strength, which is uh, strength conditioning 101. Um, so that's kind of the rhyme and reason to uh, growth spurts and how we would manage them. Now, the thing that still has not yet been talked about is, well, how do you offset injuries during these growth spurts? The big deal is when you're going through any like peak, not just peak height velocity, peak in a growth spurt, that we wanna be aware that if you lose mobility during that time, so if you lose your suppleness um, during that time, it is much harder to get back. So the Canadian Sport for Life program, any other program that's tracking growth spurts, when we see that a kid is going through a massive growth spurt, we actually pull them out of high skill scenarios, things that would, uh, require motor engrams, right? These spinal cord level uh, motor programs that are just like deadfall and say, before we lay down a motor program over top of a uh, lack of mobility or the lack of ability to build, you know, max force output, we wanna make sure that they maintain that. So simple things like uh, making sure that a kid as they go through a growth spurt can still touch their toes, you know, at least working on it through the growth spurt and maintain it after versus coming into my office you know at 14 15 and saying i've been able to touch my toes for a few years not saying you can't change it it just is a little harder than if we held on to it uh, which also means that we won't have to pull people out of sports hypothetically for injuries we can keep people moving through their full range of motion with good motor control with full expressions of strength speed and stamina that would be the goal with all of this is to kind of somehow not maybe we can't predict but we recognize faster somebody's going through a growth spurt we have a plan of action and not the westernized non-plan of action which is just play the same sport for three seasons in a row with no off season just keep going regardless if you are you know hurting or in pain 
Uh, that's the big deal with this stuff is being aware of it. The only way to be aware of that fully is to just recognize that, hey, my, my you know, kid or daughter, hey, maybe you do these things yourself. Hey, can you touch your toes? Uh, we're measuring height, you know, old school way on the door frame. And we go about our business and we've got a better plan than at least no plan. Uh, like I said, if you want to learn more about this, you can pick up my book called The Age of Movement. I'll put a link to that in the show notes as well. And um, I'll also put a link to the article in the Canadian Sport for Life uh, website so you can look into it a little bit more yourself. Hope you learned something and see you next time.